Capitalism kills. The annual human cost of capitalism. Okay, so let's see this leftist. 8 million die from clean water. 7 million... 665,000 die of hunger, 3 million die of cure from curable disease, 500,000 die of malaria. In other words, 20 million easily preventable deaths annually. These people die not because we lack the ability to solve this problem, but because it is not profitable to do so. Book of Communism alleges that com communism has killed 94 million people since 1917. Capitalism kills more than that every five years. Know the real enemy! Okay, so this logic is really dumb, and I'm going to explain why things like this are incredibly disingenuous and just completely wrong. So first of all, so first of all, before we can actually break this down, first of all, let's define capitalism and so and socialism because I guarantee you most of these people have no idea and cannot define capitalism or socialism they cannot define it they cannot define it so capitalism is the private ownership of the means of production which means that people exclusively control capital land and their own labor meaning that they have self ownership over their own body and they have ownership over scarce goods and that is the only way to solve conflicts between re caused by scarcity, as I explained in my other video, scarcity, why scarcity is inevitable. Rather, scarcity is inevitable, why a post-scarcity society is impossible, something like that. I already forgot the title. but So, capitalism is essentially self-ownership combined with private property, the division of labor, capital accumulation, and competition. So that's capitalism. So socialism, in contrast, is the common ownership of the means of production. So socialism, which is the common ownership, which means that property is owned in common. Like capital and land. And some socialists will tell you that labor is not commonly owned, meaning you still own your physical body, but you can't sell your own, you can't sell labor. So, if I can't sell my own labor, that doesn't really mean I own my physical body. That means that the collective owns my physical body. So, that means I'm technically a slave. Socialism is slavery because you don't own your own physical body under socialism. And because you don't own your own physical body, you can get killed. And under socialism, murder is legal because you no longer own your own physical body. Because they reject private property. But anyways, let's move on. So... Now that we have defined what capitalism and socialism is, very briefly, but still, we have defined them, let's break down this. So, the annual human cost of capitalism. Now, first of all, I just want to say something. This is only one statistic. There have been other ones who have said things like World War One. They have blamed capitalism on the deaths caused by World War One, World War Two, colonialism, and imperialism, and slavery. Which are literally against capitalism. Because, again, what is capitalism defined as? Self-ownership, private property, and other factors. Like division of labor, capital. But you get the point. Basically, it's a system of people owning themselves and scarce goods that they use. So that's the thing. is And killing people using these states... And statism is the direct opponent of self-ownership and private property, and thus is the opponent of capitalism. Yeah, I don't think that enslaving people goes against the right to self-ownership, and thus it also goes against the right to self-capitalism. It goes against capitalism. So slavery, colonialism, and murder goes against capitalism, because this has to be enforced through the state, which is the biggest enemy of private property. So you cannot blame any of this. But let's go back to this stupid piece of garbage propaganda that the socialists created. So... First of all, how is it easily preventable, is my question. How is it easily preventable? By sharing the wealth? By the billionaire sharing the wealth? Just to know that the billionaire's wealth is not in tangible things. It's in assets. Most of the billionaire's wealth is created via employment, industries, and investment. Most of their money is in somewhere, like in stocks, in, in shares, well, yeah, in this case, of the same thing. But in, in shares, in assets, 
And that's the thing is that if you, for example, just redistribute the wealth, you're not actually distributing the wealth. You're destroying it because you're destroying all the products that, are, that, that they create in the market. They destroy all the possible money that they could give away to charity. And you're destroying employment, which reduces wealth in society rather than just distributing it. So actually distributing the billionaire's wealth won't actually distribute the wealth. It will destroy it because most of their money is created via employment, investment and assets. And if you redistribute it, all the employment, all the products that they create and all the assets will be lost. It won't just be redistributed. It will be lost. All the wealth they create will be lost in society. It won't exist. So first of all, redistributing the wealth won't help solve these issues. And second of all, these countries, which somehow these statistics have been taken from, are not capitalist. Most of the countries in Africa and South and things like Southeast Asia and poor countries of South America are not capitalist. They're mostly socialist. Their systems have very little respect for private property, are hugely corrupt, and the, their, their private sector is looted and robbed to fund an inefficient and horrible public sector. So African countries literally have one of the most African countries have very little economic freedom, which is what capitalism is economic freedom and people owning private property that doesn't exist there is very little respect for private property and that's why the economy is very unfree so it's more socialistic so the countries are actually more socialist because most african countries and countries after colonialism implemented some sort of socialism and that's some sort of socialism destroyed the country's economy and created calamities like that and let's see so okay okay fine as socialists might say no, actually, they'll never admit it because they're they're too, you know, in their la la land and all this other bullshit. But these people die not because we have the ability, we lack the ability to solve these problems, but because it is not profitable to do so. People, dem okay, so people demand food, right? You only gain profit via supplying other people's demands. Food is this, is a good that is constantly in demand. It is very profitable to supply clean water and food because these things are very profitable because people want these things and there's a stable demand for food and water and thus if you are able to generate a stable supply and sell it and of course there's the element of competition too which reduces costs while increasing the quality but so it actually is very profitable to do this because food and water and and curable you know curing diseases has a very stable demand and is constantly in demand and is very profitable to supply the needs of others because the only way to gain profit is to supply the needs of others and the values of others the only way you can gain profit is if individuals value what they're selling more than what they give up that's how you make profit so yeah this is complete nonsense because first of all they don't even understand what the hell capitalism and socialism is. Second of all, these countries are not even capitalist, they're socialist. And third of all, it is actually profitable to supply these things. But again, since they're not capitalist, and since these countries where people die from hunger and clean water are not capitalist, they are socialist. Know the real enemy. No, I do know the real enemy. Government control and socialism. And because capitalism was never implemented in Africa and countries in, in Asia and South America, they're poor because capitalism is the greatest mechanism to reduce poverty. Before capitalism and free trade and the division of labor, poverty was widespread. That was the natural condition for humanity. People died and had a very low life expectancy. However, capitalism changed that, at least in the countries that actually implemented it. In the countries that never ch changed and adapted production, you had shit like this. Where people die from clean water because they had government control regulating this process. And to such a degree that it almost becomes impossible to actually do anything. I mean, the private in the private sector, I mean. So that's the thing, is that this is completely disingenuous. And I would call this propaganda because it merely just throws out a bunch of statistics that mean nothing given the context. Because in reality, these countries are, again, not capitalist. They are socialistic. Or rather, I would say quasi-socialist. And... No death, it's like basically, it's the same thing as I stub my toe and it's capitalism's fault. I, um, I shoot someone in the head, it's capitalism's fault that I did that. Or rather the person died because of capitalism. 
or a, mur a ma murderous maniac goes on a so you can't get food because food is not available capitalism no the you cannot blame things like lacking clean water and food on capitalism. You cannot blame them same way as you cannot blame a mass murder on capitalism. It's just ridiculous. However, the 100 million dead of socialism is a legitimate statistic. I'm like this bullshit because the 100 million dead is purely from the socialist policy. Since socialism doesn't guarantee self ownership, it actually rejects the concept entirely of private property and thus self ownership, meaning theft and, you know, killing people is legal and it's fine because if you don't own your own physical body you don't have exclusive control over it anyone can do whatever they want and thus technically they kill themselves they use your own body and if they kill you it's not your body it's not murder if it's not if you reject the entire concept of self-ownership and private property it's not theft it's not murder because it's a community's property you see what's the logic with this common ownership it's just non-existent so that's the thing is that under the 100 million debt is purely because of government intervention and government and government and central planning and socialism the famines the famines occurred after government collectivization of agriculture after government you know killed the the private farmers and established their communal farming which reduced in incentives to grow and created a man-made famine because they're unable to supply the needs of people aka the, f the needs of food and the, since production was inefficient and because of the stupid communal lack of incentives farming because of the collectivization of agriculture it caused the famine thanks to government collectivization of agriculture because of government because of socialism and all the mass purges in the name of communism clearly socialism so the 100 million dead is a true statistic because it is truly because of socialism 100 million people died because of socialism this is not happening because of capitalism. This is actually happening because of a lack of capitalism. The 20 million people dying is not capitalism. It's a lack of capitalism. The African countries, most of them, they don't have capitalism. They would have had capitalism like 100 years ago. They would have been substantially better off. And instead of 20 million, there might be just, a, uh, you know, way less people dying, let's just say, way less. Because I'm pretty sure almost nobody in the United States dies from a lack of clean water. Very few people. And same thing in Europe. Very few people. Because they had free trade and introduced their anti-capitalist policies very late compared to Africa, which never had capitalism. At least Europe and America had capitalism for some time before introducing a system of central banking and uh, right, government regulation and yeah, all that other garbage. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope I did a good job explaining why things like this is completely wrong, disingenuous, and I would even call propaganda. It's just completely wrong. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy. Goodbye. Peace.